Hello and welcome to another model video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with a, another armor review. Today we'll be looking at the 72nd 10.5 centimeter LEFH self-propelled gun, uh, British made, captured by the Germans uh, early Second World War and currently displayed as well as all uh, reference material found in uh, German colouring and markings. It was a fairly light uh, tank with an open top, uh, thin armoured uh, veil and a field gun mounted inside. A very uh, interesting kit to make, uh, manufactured in uh, Eastern Europe, quite simple. Let's have a bit of a poke around. I wish I could say that this was a fun build, though the experience was uh, quite tragic. Once uh, cracked open, we were met with these very uh, bizarre and interesting set of uh, instructions. Uh, quite uh, cluttered, missing out on a lot of detail, as well as some material trimming and uh, extra bits and pieces that are just uh, not uh, mentioned. All the runners was in a uh, sandwich bag, uh, per se, which was pretty good. Um, we were greeted with seven little uh, sheets or sprues whatever also followed by a uh, set of uh, decals uh, quite basic pretty well to uh, apply no dramas there and uh, rubber tracks which uh, did not uh, react to any glue in a positive uh, manner disintegrated uh, fairly quickly the molding is very simplistic you have a series of shapes or half shapes that are assembled to build up uh, the gun, the mounting gear, the box, the chassis and everything comes together with uh, added detail all over the place. Being an open top uh, vehicle you do have to display uh, as much as you can inside and the outside stowage is uh, quite plentiful uh, with the exhaust and um, the apartments, uh, hatches, uh, whatnot very very rich in detail though the fact that instead of using uh, sliding, sliding molds or uh, minimalizing the parts as much as humanly possible you're meted with an enormous uh, parts count requiring you to stick multiple small pieces together and allowing a very long period of time to dry uh, before attempting uh, the next stage of uh, mounting gluing measuring and cutting Mind you, the proportions and the detail do look fantastic. I lined this up somewhere with a Dragon kit. Uh, the experience with the open top uh, Nash horn was uh, quite a challenging um, project that uh, almost broke me. Uh, this is far more on the challenging scale, probably not uh, attemptable in a single day or a few, unless using Zapper Gap and Super Glue though uh, you really need to transfer uh, and explore the instructions deeply, draw out some processes and have multiple pictures and multiple views of the reference of the vehicle to double check the placements of some parts as there is a uh, hidden components that are added that are not mentioned. Mind you, with the trouble I had with uh, the cannon and the hull itself, not too bad. Uh, filling is required here and there. The wheel assemblies were absolutely fantastic. They look great and that's normally the part of the kit that most small scale armor falls apart on. This was soured and completely ruined that the tracks were not stretchable at all, could not really connect and broke into several parts while applying super glue. This took uh, more than a day in multiple uh, steps to make it look passable on one side and the other side was a, a bit of an abortion. That aside, if you really enjoy the fiddly super detail, putting a thousand small parts uh, together and we'll do it in a very fine, slow uh, manner, this is probably definitely for you. If you're after those quick, easy, snap, smash together builds, uh, I would probably uh, absolutely avoid. The building process is not for everyone and I can see some who have not gone further than the complexity of an airfix build would uh, most likely abandon or throw uh, the product out. I'm hoping the review sort of gives you an insight that if the subject matter itself and the cool appearance is enough for you to uh, endure all this, 
jump on it by all means though uh, due to its high uh, price cost of uh, importing and changing hands uh, the experience was uh, a bit disappointing uh, to me yet I'm still pretty glad to have it as an addition to my finished collection as you can see my attempt was very very rough uh, a couple of gaps here and there and ever so slightly warped uh, the tracks are <laughs> a complete uh, disaster nonetheless uh, overcame the challenge and at least got something that I could uh, play around with paint uh, to be completely honest no idea what I was trying to attempt with this uh, the next slide we applied to me a primer as normal to see that was uh, nothing that was glaringly obvious that will come out in paint or need uh, follow further up followed by a coat of Gynota oxidized red I swear this thing has gone through about uh, 25 to 30 tanks and it's only two thirds empty the decision was to treat this as a test bed be a bit playful with uh, painting and camouflage a bit thick in the uh, application of the lines uh, free-handed though absolutely ideal for um, looking at some new weathering uh, products and techniques using uh, makeup uh, elements to improve it and uh, some fine dusting on of uh, weathering pigments improving that game um, ever so uh, slightly and uh, that's when uh, this really starts to come out and uh, the blending of all these techniques hide some of the flaws and uh, bring it out to its own thing mind you the mistakes are made and the issues are still uh, quite apparent the goal was to go for the uh, field blue and uh, green camouflage look and gradient it from uh, the low ends dark to high ends uh, lightish uh, looking again uh, the free handed lines were a bit uh, too faded a bit too uh, thick that was due to improper maintenance and balance uh, with the uh, airbrush a couple of paints were a tad too uh, thick or sorry thin but hey, I'm a regular to three-handing 70-second um, uh, armor camouflage and want to have a crack at some uh, tankets and Imperial Japan stuff without the use of uh, masks. So if you've achieved these uh, results, you're doing pretty well. Uh, wouldn't complain uh, too much. Hand-painted uh, the final details in acrylics and uh, lacquers like the tank tracks and exhaust, uh, a little bit of detail, the machine gun and whatnot. Machine gun's probably a tad on the uh, thick side, but everything else is just panning out uh, quite nicely. Decals uh, slid on without any issues. Then we went into the multiple stages of uh, finished clears uh, applied as well as uh, weathering products. Weathering process involved either using Tamir or SMS uh, washes. Started off with a black, went into um, a dark uh, brown straight after that, sludging it and cleaning up where appropriate. The lower area tank tracks and whatnot uh, also got a heavy dose of uh, light uh, brown. Once that was given a couple of days to dry and harden, sprayed it with uh, SMS uh, matte clear which gives it that nice gritty uh, sharp uh, surface to apply pigment started off using a pencil used for uh, makeup a black and uh, a brown to pick up and highlight all the edges a silver pencil for very very light uh, chipping and then uh, makeup uh, pastels which is the first time i've ever used it in a large palette of around 30 colors and using a q-tip wiping them in the corners and uh, crevices of certain details kind of a bit like a, a mud build up or uh, whatnot uh, underneath and in the lower areas it's going to kick up like uh, clouds also uh, stippled on different shades of uh, rust on the exhaust uh, black in the end of the gun barrel and uh, exhaust got a bit of uh, rust uh, wash and just pinned it in a few corners in certain areas to uh, have it look like it's uh, sort of bleeding through ever so slightly matted it all down again to seal all of those effects applied a tiny amount of uh, MIG uh, pigment in some areas and the use of uh, watered down white spirits uh, blended them in all over the place put some dry pigment uh, here and there and some streaking with the tiniest amount of uh, rust and wiping back followed by a final matte coat 
all the weathering to have this definition look. Again, I can't repeat enough how much I'm disappointed in uh, my attempt at uh, building this. Could have been a bit more better if I was patient, but I kind of just wanted to uh, rough something out, uh, feeling a, a tad down and just tackling a quick uh, project. Probably should have picked up an S model or a trumpeter or something. Nonetheless, uh, the challenge uh, was definitely uh, rewarding and with something I felt like it was just uh, scrap to go all out and uh, weather and paint and finish and whatnot, it kind of came out uh, quite nice. If I had a, a quite a proper build that was uh, just up to uh, snuff with aftermarket parts and whatnot and did a similar finish that had a tighter airbrush scheme, uh, it'd probably uh, be uh, near perfect though. In the weathering side of things, learnt a lot just playing around and trying these couple of new techniques that I definitely wish to share and did a Twitch stream uh, recently on a resin Gundam kit. Anyway, all of that said and done, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll try to pump out some new tank stuff. It's very uh, popular. I really enjoy it. I feel there is an incline of uh, improvement and uh, a style change. See where that heads. Catch you guys next time. Stay tuned for further content. Always trying to keep a video up here once a week. See you later.